You guys have been out on no limit hold them. Been a while since I have uh, got anything up here. I just thought I'd do some uh, live um, like gameplay and sort of talk about my decisions one decision point at a time. In the first hand, um, I think when we pick up a big hand in an anonymous site, we may as well open a little bit bigger than we might plan on opening. Um, so villains folded two out of two, so we need to start thinking that he might be a little bit on the tight side. Um, and and just keeping the same race size now until we have some good reason to deviate or some camouflage. Like, uh, this is just the most standard and obvious for to see that you're on that, that could exist. Um, yeah, I think we want to be super polarized on a board like Queen for a Deuce. Um, like, probably just good top pairs and better. And then, like, all of our, well, um, Probably just top pair plus and like uh, all of our air and uh, want to play our draws kind of both ways. Some some of them this way, some of them that way. Like probably our best draws actually like our highest showdown value draws and nut flush draw on a board like that. We maybe just want to check back and use our draws at the least showdown value to bluff with. Because we're gonna have plenty of bluffs, but I do think we can exploit our opponent because. They're just not going to have a hand that often. This is really, really close. If I didn't think he was playing kind of tight, I wouldn't try this bet. Like, I would normally fold 8-4 offsuit, um, especially if I was jacking my raise size up. And actually, if this guy's playing this tight, I might want to start sizing down. So maybe I start min-raising. Because um, I'm still going to have some fold equity. Uh, and, you know, he's playing tight. Oftentimes, I would uh, continue with king high heads up. Um, sometimes it's a three better, sometimes it's a flat. Um, but against a player that's kind of tight, I think we can just let it go. Um, on these small or these uh, paired boards, I like to bet small because I think I need to bet small with my uh, value hands, and I'm able to bet small uh, with my bluffs for kind of the same reason. And then if I'm bluffing, um, I want to do a lot of double throwing because the idea is I want him to float me on the flop, pocket twos, pocket threes, ace high, some of these like king and queen uh, type hands that I think he will have to fold uh, off into the turn double barrel, but just not that time. And really, I could have been a little pickier about the turn card. Maybe maybe I should have just checked that one back and decided to give it up. I think this is just a mandatory and obvious three bet. I don't think we need to do anything different with our sizing. Just three times his raise uh, when he goes three times the big blind, I think he's fine. If he mid raises, if you want to go like uh, 3x plus a little bit, I think that's fine, uh, maybe even 4x, like if he goes to 40, we can go to like 115 or something like that, 160, I, I think, um, let's see, I think he can check and call it, like we've got, um, this board doesn't hit either of us very well, but we've got some good turn cards like that one that can happen. Um, he can just give up. He seems to be c betting pretty often. We have the best hand fairly often. We pick up a gut shot. In fact, we've got a uh, double gut shot. So even though it's a bigger size bet, I don't think I don't think we can fold here. We have too many outs, and our ace could be good. And he could just check back on the river, um, on kind of a blank river, or one that favors us. Um, he could check this back. If he bets, we have to fold. But yeah, we have the best hand here often enough. Um, and I'm talking about on a turn, like with our overcard outs that may be good, and our uh, eight straight draw outs that should have pretty good implied odds attached to them. Um, I think that, uh, uh, yeah, I probably could open that actually. So, um, I think that we had plenty, plenty, plenty of uh, incentive to just call that turn. And actually, when we called on the flop, we had the best hand. We called on the turn, we had the best hand. And then, he let us check it back. Uh, or, I mean, he let us uh, get the showdown. Or he decided to showdown. So that was nice. Or whatever. We're just gonna. Good enough. We got the most uh, obvious and standard C bet ever. The board's kind of dry. I mean, it does have you know, a one possible flush draw open, but I still think like 
even though I like to be a little more pulled on turns. Um, when Hichok raises that card, I'm not quite sure I'm buying that. I think I'm probably just going to pay him off. Like, what can we have? Yeah, I would have. I would have expected that if he had something like that, like most players would check to use the flop with two pairs. So, yeah, maybe we could just start listening to the old Beluga theorem and fold our one pair in one zone turns. I know that. We, yeah, that's. Yeah, maybe like one pair without a redraw, we could just fold it on the uh, uh, turn. How do you guys like my decision to slow cook pre flop? I felt like. We didn't need to put any more money into the pot in order to uh, get stacks in because we were short enough. Um, I'm just trying to figure out here what's the. So we could be doing min raising, we could be doing 3xing. Um, shit, man. God, our hands are so good. And we got back to uh, uh, so much of that thought. Two over cards, back to our flush draw. Uh, King high for some showdown value, but the bet was just too big. Um, I like to aggressively attack the first limp. We already did that, by the way. I don't know if you noticed that, but he, when he limped the first time, we went after it and did it. Um, if you guys have paid any attention to my videos, um, you'll know that I feel pretty strongly that when most players limp, for the first time after they've been doing a lot of raising, it means that uh, they're probably weak. Because um, I think what happens is players, like if they've been raising, they're not just going to all at once limp pocket aces. But if they have some kind of crap hand, they might say to themselves, well, you know, I'll just limp this, giving this big price, and try to see a flop. And if he attacks it, well, I can always uh, balance my strategy. So, um, I can always mix in some stronger limps into my limp range, and that's fine, they may well do that, but they usually won't do it in the first hand, so um, it's like, yeah, they might end up doing some balanced uh, range construction with their limp range, but I think commonly what happens is what incentivizes the person to construct this balanced limping range in the first place is that they have a hand that's kind of crappy that they want to flick in a call with. And they justify it to themselves by saying, I can always balance later. It's like, well, fine, but you're not balanced right now. So that first one, I think you can attack. Um, it's going to be kind of shitty if we get Chuck raised here. Uh, we can probably stack it off. He'll have some draws. We've got the gut shot. We've got the overcard. We've got the nut flutter. We've got the flush draw. Uh, we blocked the fourth nut. Um, still... Yeah, that's pretty bad, but... I think it's fine. Hey, alright. Back in the game. And, um, I think we've let him slide on enough of these that he could be just limping crap in the ends again. And, uh, so I'm gonna attack this one. Uh, I don't think we can accomplish much with a bat here. I don't think he's gonna fold anything that we want him to fold or call with anything we want him to call with. Uh, if he bets here, it's going to kind of gross. Um, okay, so I think we'd have maybe some 2x that we like. Boy, this is probably an exploded or full. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, we kind of have to call. But, yeah, I mean, we'll have better hands now. I mean, we can fold most of our hands uh, between the turn and a little bit. But I just, I felt like if I was folding King High on the turn, that you could just bet any two cards, which is really bad, especially like, you know, if you're inducing bluffs by checking back, right? But yeah, we'll have pocket pairs and stuff. Okay, so I like to uh, go for the small bet here with my value hands, and I think I can get called by worst with my pocket eights. I'm not sure if I can get, I can probably get two streets, but I don't know if I want to go from here or on the river. The river gives me a chance to induce a bluff, um, and if he checks, he's like never folding, so I think we can just uh, go ahead and bet the half pot, uh, even though he's capped. I mean, he's like, the dude just has a bluff catcher here, and we should just go ahead and bet. Probably don't want to bet too big, because um, he's got like a five here very often. 
Um, so I'd like to see this. He's got a five, or he banked the river for a seven. I mean, he's just gonna like once we give up. If he's not bluffing the river, usually it's gonna be because he's exactly checking to call. Um, with like some kind of a bluff catcher showdown value type hand. So like half pot seems about right. You know, maybe you can size up a little bit to put him in a real bind. But it's like because the bet went in on the flop and then he shut down. I think he had exactly five x there very often. Um, if the if it would have been like uh, a seven on the flop and then a five and a six on turn and river, I would have sized bigger. We've got the nuts, and I think that's that. All right, so a uh, goofy way to play fives, and that's going to do it. Oh, wait, he's got chips left. Okay, well, he's got a few chips left. We'll get him. Yeah, and I, I do want to raise this, but I'm kind of raising it for value, so I don't want to go so big that it turns my hand into a bluff. So I want to keep his worst uh, spade spades in. I want to keep his worst jack x in and his worst ten x in. Okay, I think I'm going to go for the check. I mean, at some point he's just going to stab at this, right? I'm going to... I really cannot believe that he uh, didn't bet or call at any point. I would have thought if he had a hand that could call, he would have bet the turn. And if he had a hand that could call, and he might check the turn back if he would have called the river. I'm pretty surprised by that. Whoa! Man, is he gonna suck out here? Yeah, that will take it. That was a pretty crazy call. I mean, he only had. Yeah, no, that was a bad call. Okay. This is pretty gross, but I think we have to fold it. Really feeling the nine five. If we were gonna play the nine five, I think we have to rip it, and I, and I don't think that would have been bad. We gotta call this. I mean, it's close, but we already saw him stack jack five. There we go, eight four, and that's a that's a wrap, sir. Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. All right, and uh, hopefully that was cool. I'm gonna shut this down. Gotta run. Uh, till next time, not and not on more than hold them over and out. They quote good quote L U C K exclamation point end quote. Been a while. They don't.